Guys, it's so great to connect with you all, whether you're watching on YouTube, Grace Church Cork, or you're listening on our podcast. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. But you know what? I guess we all have a little bit more time in some ways uh, than we had before. So if you were watching either live on Instagram or Facebook, or you were watching uh, the YouTube, the previous uh, YouTube video, uh, I was looking last Sunday at Healing from a Distance Part 1, but today I'm going to do Part 2, and I want to round off the uh, study that I started last week. So if you might remember from last week, we were looking at a servant who was sick, and we were told that a servant who was loved by his master was sick and dying. This is Luke 7. And the context, if you remember, was that Jesus was in Capernaum, beautiful place on the Mediterranean, right up in the north of Israel. And a Roman centurion, occupying force, the enemy, if you will, but this man had a different heart. And this captain in the Roman army had a servant who not only did he respect, he grew to love. And there was a bond and a deep friendship between these men that just blasted away all of the culture and all of the barriers from a human perspective. And so, because this guy knew the people of the town, he had sent some Jewish elders to ask Jesus to come to the servant. And we also looked last week at how, even though as a church we believe in the anointing of oil and the laying on of hands, you can see it here on the screen, there were many instances in the Bible where it wasn't possible to heal someone with the laying on of hands. So the normative is the laying on of hands with oil to pray for the sick. But we can see someone's shadow, Peter's shadow, Paul, pieces of cloth that touched him, people were healed. Jesus just said the word from a distance or even with the Canaanite's daughter in Matthew 15, we can see how the girl wasn't even present. It was her mother who was in effect praying and Jesus just healed her again from a distance. So this is where we were last time and we also ended up with verse 6 from Luke chapter 7. Hope you read the whole chapter, guys. And we were told, and I finished off with the fact that Jesus followed these Jewish elders and he started making his way to the house of this centurion so he could pray for this man who was sick and dying. And remember, I also was bringing in the complications that were going through this guy's head. He was a Gentile, he wasn't a Jew. So tradition had it, if a Jew, like Jesus at the time, would have gone into the house, Jesus would have been excluded from the synagogues, from the temple, um, he would himself be considered unclean. So his whole ministry would have been compromised. It was only a servant anyway, from a natural point of view. And the guy who was making the requests was actually an occupying enemy soldier. None of this made sense. And when you and I pray for healing, there's always a complication comes into our heads as to why Jesus shouldn't heal. But Jesus is more concerned about the person not about the situation. So that's where we ended. We sang that beautiful song, Waymaker, Jesus is on his way. Let's pick up the rest of the narrative in Luke chapter seven, and I pray, Lord, your word would speak and feed us today in Jesus' name, amen. Here we go and we pick it up. Healing from a distance, part two. Not far from the house, remember Jesus is on the way, the centurion sent even more friends to Jesus to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself. I don't deserve to have you come to my house. And that's why I don't consider myself worthy to come to you personally. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell one to go and he goes. I say to another, come and he comes. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed 
and turning to the crowd following him said, I haven't found faith like this even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent to Jesus returned to the centurion's house and they found that the servant was healed and fully recovered. Hallelujah. So Jesus didn't even get to the house. All of those questions about will I be compromised? Will I be excluded? Is my ministry over? What's this going to do for the witness? They were all for nothing. Jesus simply started going and making his way. But the man, the centurion, was concerned and worried. Look what he said in verses 6 and 7. He sent more friends to Jesus saying, I don't deserve for you to come to my house or for me to come to you. I'm fascinated with this because this guy had a lot of friends. Because here it says he sent even more friends. He would have been an incredibly popular man. Even though he had an authority, his heart was kind. He was reasonable, he would have been a gentleman, and he wasn't self-focused, he was focused on helping others. And so he was loved by the people of Capernaum, just as he too loved them. And earlier on, last time in the last video, we saw how the people and the leaders of Capernaum said, This man loves us. But he tries to say to Jesus, I don't deserve this. And... What if someone you love gets sick with COVID-19 and maybe they're dying? Or what if you get sick? I bet you in your heart, as in mine, we'll go, I don't deserve for you to answer me, Lord. I don't deserve a healing. And we're right. We don't deserve it. And this man didn't deserve it. But that's called grace. Undeserved favour. Hallelujah. The grace of God goes beyond what any of us deserve. Mercy is where we don't get what we should get, like a judgment or a punishment. And then grace is where we are given um, benefits and blessings that obviously we don't deserve either. So he tries to say to Jesus, I don't deserve this, Lord. You, I, you shouldn't come to my house, and that's why I haven't come even to you personally. And he goes on and he starts explaining about how he's a Roman centurion. And this guy gets authority. And what he's saying when he talks about his own life, how he can say to one of his soldiers, go, come. And remember, they weren't living in a democracy. If a soldier gave him attitude, he was well within his rights to just kill him. There and then, gone. Life was cheap back then. Nobody thought anything about it. So a soldier had an attitude he didn't like. Kill him. Kill him. So he knew what authority was. And what he is saying here. You can read it. I too am a man under authority. What he's saying is. Jesus I recognize that you are the one with authority over nature. You are the one with authority over sickness. You are the one with authority over circumstances. And he declares this and he brings it back to his own experience and his own life. And look at this final thing he said. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Praise God. What wonderful faith. Just say the word. Just say the word, Lord, and I know the one I love will be healed. If you read all of the healings in scripture, and I don't have time to go into it today, but you will read there's a whole body of people who were healed and they were healed because they had faith. Now some people take this to an extreme, but you can't airbrush it out. It's there. A lot of people had healing because they had faith to believe. Others had no faith and Jesus healed them anyway. So he said, just say the word. That's all, Lord. You don't even have to come to my house. You can heal from a distance. You don't have to come into my unclean house. I will isolate myself from you. I'm not a Jew. It's not right in this culture. So just say the word, Lord, from a distance. And we'll have healing in my house this day. And look at Jesus' response in, verses seven to, or sorry, in verse 9. He was amazed at the man's faith. And he said, I haven't even found faith like this even in Israel. So that means among the Jews, the people of God. Sometimes here in Grace and Cork, we'd see someone come in the door. And I have a couple of times really found it incredible. Their faith is so strong and in that God can help them. And they don't even know what it is to connect with God. And that's like this guy. He was on a journey towards the Lord. 
But his faith was so strong even from the beginning. And if you read about the life of Jesus, he's only ever amazed at two things. People's faith and people's lack of faith. Nothing else surprises him. When he sees that people have no faith, he's amazed. And he's amazed at the fact that they just have no faith. They don't believe. I said it last time. That's why in Nazareth there were very few miracles. People there didn't have faith. If you don't have faith, that's your call. But don't expect God to be healing. This man had faith and Jesus was amazed at it. It got his attention as it were. And this guy was even better than the guys in Israel. And so we're told as we come towards the end of this uh, piece, we're told that when they, that's the friends who had gone to Jesus, got back to the centurion's house, they found the servant was healed and fully recovered. And that is verse 10. So I'm going to ask you the question. Where's the bit where Jesus said, be healed now? Where, where's the word? The centurion said, all you have to do is say the word. But Jesus didn't even say a word. There was no word. He just said he was amazed at the faith. And so these friends would have gone back, probably not really sure what was going on. But when they got back to the house, the one who was sick was healed. The one who was dying was no longer dying. And it wasn't even as if Jesus said a word. It happened because Jesus willed it. So if you think there is a formula for healing all the time, there is a normative way of healing. But you can't just put God in a box and say, unless you do it exactly according to this formula, you won't be healed. You won't read that in the Bible. You see general direction, but healing can take place in incredible ways. Now, I appreciate there are some watching in, and maybe you don't believe healing is for today. You know, I respect your opinion, and God bless you, but for us, we're just going to have to go by what we see the scripture says, and I'm certainly not going to jump through hoops to try and argue out or airbrush parts of scripture. Healing is in the Bible. I am convinced for today. And praise God we've seen many people healed here in grace over the years. And we see it in the Bible. We see it in the Gospels, in the Book of Acts, in the Epistles. It's all over the place. This man was healed and there wasn't even a formula. Jesus was amazed at his master's faith. And then healing came into that house. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus heals today. And as I conclude, do you remember the woman who had the issue of blood? And we're told she should have been self-isolated. She was unclean. She should not have been in that crowd. And yet she went and she didn't want to compromise Jesus. And she said, if I just touch the edge of his cloak, his garment. And she didn't even touch his body. And it was probably from the back. So you know what? Even in today's world where we're all afraid of picking up COVID-18 or we're just watching it, that probably wouldn't even count. Just for a second, touching the edge of someone's coat from the back. But what did Jesus say? Power went out through me and the woman was healed. And it, it just encourages me so much that the God who heals today is the God who heals in different ways. And if you're isolated and you can't get to anyone or people aren't able to call to you, Jesus can still heal you. Hallelujah. Or if someone you love in your household is sick, Jesus can still heal them. So I'm going to close in a moment. And what I'm going to pray, pray I'm going to pray and I quote it again. We know that in the book of um, Exodus, the great plague happened in Egypt when they were trying to keep the Israelites in slavery. And we're told the angel of death, it's really sobering stuff, went and killed the firstborn in every home. But when the blood was put on the doors of the Israelites, the angel of death passed over. Coming up very soon is the Jewish feast of Passover. And the Jews celebrate the fact that the angel of death didn't go into their homes. I'm going to pray that for your home, that nobody would die through this crisis. I'm going to even pray that anyone who may get sick will be healed. We can't command Jesus to do it, but we can certainly pray that that would be the case. We're going to sing a beautiful song, or Michael is going to sing it, and the song 
is um, written by Matt, Matt Redmond. It's a gorgeous song. It's all about how Jesus is the one who is our rescue. So if you're feeling a little bit anxious today about your finances or about your health or about being isolated, we're going to call out to the one who will cause the angel of death to pass over. If the blood is on the door of your home, I speak figuratively. Michael. now or listening now and we pray into your household that the blood of Jesus that you believe in would be like an eternal marker on the doorposts of your house so that when virus or trouble or disaster or bankruptcy or marriage breakup or terrible hurt is visiting home after home that the shalom peace of God would be over your home and over my home. And that God, you would rescue us because you are our rescue. So we pray instead into our homes the blessing of God. And we pray you would turn this curse into the greatest blessing in our lives. We pray for everyone now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please don't go. Here's a couple of notices from Michael. And he'll tell us about what's happening in the week. Remember, by the way, that if you're watching this during the week, next Sunday, last Sunday in March, the clocks go forward an hour. So while it will be 12 noon, while we'll be going live, it might feel like 11. But anyway, so the clocks change next Sunday. Let's hear the final piece of news from Michael. Hey guys, don't forget we're going to be here again for our online service next Sunday, 12 noon. While we're talking about healing, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the healthcare workers 
who work here in Grace. We've got a couple of dozen people who work as nurses and work, at do work as doctors. These people are absolutely on the front line even as we speak and we just ask you, keep them in your prayers. Most of us are probably going to be just fine but these people are really on the front line so please keep them on your prayers that they would experience and know God's blessing, protection and provision at this current time. Mm -hmm. Don't forget we're going to be here next Sunday. We're going to be live again on Instagram, on Grace underscore Christian underscore church, live on uh, Facebook on Grace Christian Church. We're also do going to be putting it up as usual for a catch up up on YouTube at Grace Church Cork and the same with our podcast which are going to be following up shortly after this goes out. So we want to just leave you now and just give you a couple of other reminders of things that, have, that are coming up. First of all, we'd ask you if you do have birthdays or anniversaries or some such coming in, please send them in. Let us know about it. If you want us to give you a shout out, send, it, send them in and let us know. You can email or text us. You can leave a comment on a YouTube page. You can leave a comment on a Facebook page. Make sure you connect with us because we want to stay as much as we can a community, even if we are physically apart, that digitally we'll be together in spirit. Would anyone say? Amen. Amen. Don't forget if you want to give to the work here at Grace Christian Church, you can do so. No pressure, no hassle, nobody's watching, but if you want to do so, you can give on your phone right now if you want to give to dot graceireland.ie we appreciate your support as ever you can give by debit or credit card if you go onto our website and then go onto our donate page this is our home page if you go to the donate volunteer click donate it'll take you to our donate at grace church a page and you can scroll down to the donate area and give uh, the information give whatever you want to give whatever you can afford to give and whatever you do give give cheerfully but we really appreciate your work your support in all the work that we're trying to do here in grace so that's about it for this one the midweek service is now coming to an end we we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday at 12 noon. Peace out.